Storytelling. It's essential to who we are as human beings. Our ancestors started telling stories, oh, about 40,000 years ago. Their first cave painting started the first transformation in, yes, media. From the oral tradition to calligraphy, from the printing press to the spirit of radio and the magic of television. And the current upheaval in storytelling, the move toward immersive multimedia, is no less transformational. However, these changes come with a host of questions and complications for storytellers in the 21st century. I'm Harlan Makemson, a professor of communications at Elon University, and we're going to spend the next couple of classes discussing trends in multimedia storytelling and examining a few sites on the leading edge of this revolution. In between, you'll share some of your insights about digital storytelling on a class discussion board. Okay, so let's spend a minute or two laying out what our agenda is going to be for part one of this lesson. Uh, first of all, we're going to define what multimedia storytelling is because depending on the context and depending on what um, the different purposes, there are all kinds of definitions out there. So we need to settle on one uh, for our purposes. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about finding the story. So the process you need to determine exactly what the story is and the in-depth nature you need to do these sorts of stories. Uh, determining what media you're going to use is a consideration that we will deal with in a, in a brief manner. Uh, we're going to talk about how important this is to collaborate in these, uh, these types of stories we're going to discuss. And then we will start discussing a story that's gotten a lot of attention in the past year uh, about how it's changing storytelling, uh, so-called snowfall effect. So let's begin with how we're going to define multimedia storytelling. So again, different contexts have different definitions. There are storytelling for educational purposes. There's obviously fiction storytelling. There's brand storytelling where different, um, different products try to tell, uh, try to make their name for themselves by telling a story in a fictional manner. Here, we're, for our purposes, we're going to stick to multimedia storytelling that's based in a journalism or documentary tradition. So many of the products projects we're going to be analyzing uh, come from journalism or documentary organizations. Uh, the ones we're going to look at include all of the following, but uh, different types of stories may not include every single one of these, but some combination of text, still photography, video, audio, graphics, and interactivity. We're going to talk a bit about how each medium should complement the other, so we don't want to repeat information in the different media. These are projects that are delivered via the web or increasingly being tablet, via tablet or app. And these tend toward being a nonlinear structure, meaning that they do not have a specific beginning, middle, and end, although that varies. Uh, some are more nonlinear than others, and we'll talk about in part two particularly some of the ways that manifests itself. Let's move toward um, how do you find the story and substance first, style second. So the projects we're looking at, the type of storytelling that we're discussing in this segment is reported over a long period of time. So many of the projects you're going to see uh, took months in the uh, least weeks, if not months, in the story gathering process. So you need to report thoroughly. All of these, the basics still matter. So you don't have a good story until you've done thorough reporting on these things. And sometimes you're not even sure exactly what the story is until you've immersed yourself with your subjects and with material for a lengthy amount of time. And then you have to edit ruthlessly. Uh, some of these uh, multimedia projects had multiple terabytes of video, audio, information, um, and much of that was discarded. You're only, the final product's only going to have a tiny bit of what was shot or what was produced. So you need to be absolutely sure that what you include, A, is of high quality from a technical standpoint, but more importantly, advances the story. You have to be ruthless in getting rid of what doesn't move that story forward for you. How do you choose which media to use with so many options? Again, most of these projects use some combination of uh, all the types we discussed, audio, video, text, graphics. Uh, there's two answers to that. One sort of more theoretical, although we'll see some examples of where this actually happens, is to let your reporting drive the choices. So you do the information gathering and then stop and think what would be a better use of video? What part of the story would be a better use for information graphics? Um, but often more in practice, it's really the vision of a journalist or a documentarian who's really skilled in one area 
So it might be a print journalist who has thoroughly reported a story and either he or his editors see opportunities for multimedia reporting, or it could be a video documentarian who realizes that graphics or text accompaniment might be helpful and brings in others uh, to help uh, with those aspects that uh, the dominant media that person is most comfortable with does not handle quite as well. That point brings us to a, a, a truism about multimedia storytelling. It, it's a group thing. Uh, the quote you're seeing on this slide is from uh, Brian Storm, who is the founder of MediaStorm, which is an innovative digital storytelling um, shop. And his quote gets at the idea here that uh, this is not something one person can do. It by nature is collaborative. Now there is a, a time and place for everybody to be a little bit skilled in all the different ways of telling stories. Uh, but the things we're going to see and discuss, there's no way one person, even two people can pull them off. It takes the skills uh, of multiple individuals to pull these things together. So these are highly, highly collaborative. There's no way you can do it um, without uh, multiple sources, multiple uh, multiple skill sets to put these sorts of things together. We're going to spend some time taking a look at a story that exemplifies much of what we've discussed so far. The New York Times celebrated snowfall, the story of a catastrophic avalanche in Washington state. It was initially conceived by reporter John Branch as a traditional text-based story, and it did indeed excel as that type of story, garnering Branch the Pulitzer Prize for feature reporting. However, editors at the Times recognized the story's potential to create an immersive experience online through the use of video, motion graphics, and interactivity. The result was so visually stunning that the project became a verb. Editors around the country began asking their subordinates, can we snowfall this story? But the project also had its share of detractors, asking whether this story, however tragic, warranted the large amounts of resources necessary to produce it in a multimedia format, and whether it was even possible for any smaller organization to produce a similar piece of digital journalism. We'll analyze both the kudos and the criticisms over on the discussion board. We'll see you there.